Okay. All right. So today, expired boot camp. Um, this is a great time of year to work expired listings. Most listing agents, when they take listings, right? They, you know, that July window, six months, things are coming off the market at the end of the year. So this is a great month for expired. Now, I'm going to teach you a little bit different approach to expired. And as always, there's a bunch of scripts and dialogues. I'm not always going to get uh, to all of those. So you guys will have to take the time to read those after the fact. Um, so because I, I want to just teach you the meat of the concept of what, what we teach in Momentum. Um, that being said, expired are not for the faint of heart. Right. These people just think about and we'll go over this in the class material, but, you know, they're they're upset Right. They, they, and a lot of times they haven't, they haven't been encouraged to take accountability for the fact that their home is probably overpriced. Right. It's either overpriced or condition. And we can, we can overcome condition and location all with price. Right. Price is, price is king. And so, you know, if someone's not encouraged to take accountability, uh, you know, we, and everything we teach in momentum, right, is about partnership, right? This isn't just you, Kristen, coming in and telling people what to do, right? This is, this is us being a partnership and, and finding the appropriate price point that we should enter the market, right? Sorry, I got people jumping in here. Uh, so someone's been on the market six months, eight months, a year, whatever, it's failed to sell, you know, they're angry, right? They're disappointed, they're frustrated, there's a lot of emotions going on. And oftentimes, the longer the listing sits on the market, the less communication we have with them, right? And so if you're going to work expired, my caveat is, is that you have to have thick skin. So I'm going to give you some great, two really great scripts that if you want to work expires are great scripts um, to icebreakers, right? But you have to have thick skin. You have to understand, Kim, that when they come at you like a spider monkey, it's not about you, right? It's not about you. It's about the previous relationship that failed, okay? Um, I coached a guy early on as a workman coach that worked expired as it was really a strong pillar for him, but he would go back into the MLS three to five years and work those expireds because those people tend to be less angry. They still might have a, a desire to sell. And so that's something to think about is going back. Now, do you call on the first day? You, yeah, you can, but just know that you're not going to be the only realtor calling on the first day. And you might, you know, end up hearing them say like, why can't y'all just leave me alone? Like why, you know, so we'll go over some of those common, common scripts that are uh, common things that come up that people will say. So depending on what you want to do, three to five years, right? Less angry. <laughs> uh, if you call them on the first day, uh, be prepared that, you know, they're again, they're going to come at you like a spider monkey. I always think of expired as like a hornet's nest, right? And a hornet's nest is all pissed off, right? And and so you got to think you have to be, you have to be thick skinned and you have to understand that it is not about you. Um, but you also have to have the attitude that you're different, right? And that you come from a place of service and a place of service means that I could get the job done. Your other realtor failed you. Let me help you get the job done. Okay. So those are just kind of my two little things before we jump into the materials. Those are you who came in. I will, after we get done, I'll send you over the class materials. Um, so let me get my share screen going here. And thank you all for being here. So I know, you know, this time of year isn't always fun to be doing classes, but this is our last official class for 2023. Um, and hopefully I'll see all of you at the VIG on Thursday. Looking forward to it. All right, so today talking about expired listings. So our course overviews, we wanna teach you a proactive approach. Those of you taking momentum, right? Proactive is a word we use often and proactive just means to produce action. Yesterday, I had a full day, you guys. I started at 8 a.m. on Zoom and I didn't finish until three o'clock. And the overarching theme in all my coaching calls yesterday was tracking, right? And tracking is being proactive, right? So to be proactive means to produce action. And we can... You can do something messy and janky as long as you're doing it, right? Messy and janky is better than nothing. Uh, and so to produce action means to take action. If any of you have ever like suffered from anxiety or depression, like the best thing to do is to go take action, right? Get up and move your body. And so when we talk about this, like even Kristen, even if it's, even if the call is messy, right? It's still better than nothing, right? It's better than not doing anything, Okay. Um, and so we have to be, you know, I've, I've used the word tactical a lot since the whole NAR thing happened, um, because the word tactical to me has a lot of meat to it. Right. And if I'm being tactical, it means I'm doing shit. Right? <laughs> I'm doing stuff I need to be doing. And right now we got to be different, you guys. Right. We got to be different. So the expectations, we want you to feel confident enough to have consistent calls with expired listings. Um, and so setting yourself up on, you know, if, you know, Kim. Put yourself on a on a list in, in Westbrook Village. Anytime something goes off the market, you get notification, right? Uh, and then obviously we want to increase our revenue and increase our listings, right? So 
specifically talking about expireds. This is going to bring new business sellers. Um, hopefully all of you guys are using KB Core uh, that you can put people into a follow follow-up system. You want to have obviously some things, signs, sign, signs for when you get the listing, um, you're advertising the internet. And if we're going to do just listed postcards, which we'll talk more about. Okay. Um, being proactive, right? What does this mean to be proactive? So if we look at the slide, the phase one, which is where I think all of us are. And when it comes to working expired listings, if you worked for 45 weeks, and you had 50 dials, now there may not be 50 dials to have be made, uh, right? Like, currently with listings coming off well i don't know i take i take that back there might be this time of year just because of the way that the market has shifted so quickly so there might be and there might be you know 50 houses that come off the market that you would want to call now if you're going to go back three to five years right you're going to have more options there but let's just say for the sake of discussion if you made 50 calls a week um, and then we got a 15% response rate, then we were able to set 7.5% of that. That's 25 new appointments per year. And if 30% of them canceled, that's a total of 18%, which yeah, and if they have a strong desire, that number that number might be different for you. Uh, and depending on who you're, you know, what's their motivation for selling. So you have 18 appointments. If you're only able to convert half of those, which I think most of us are probably better than that, right? The average is about 65% conversion rate. Um, and by the way, that's something you want to track for yourself. Track how many appointments you're going on. You know, and then how many of them are you actually landing? And then that gives you your own conversion rate. I have a friend of mine who's a master coach that actually wants to drive his conversion rate down um, so that that tells him he's going on more appointments. If you tell me, Ashley, that your conversion rate's 99%, I'm going to tell you you're not going on enough appointments, right? So we have to get out there where people have to know you in order to know if they want to do business with you. Uh, and so... 50%, so that's an additional nine listings. If only half of those sell, which we know in our market, at least 75% of listings sell. 25% still fail to, to sell for various reasons, right? Price mostly, condition, location. Uh, so if that's only five, you guys at an average of, let's just say $10,000 commission, that's 50 grand. I don't know about you, but that's a pretty good day, right? Um, I was talking to somebody yesterday who got a, a $41,000 commission check and they were kind of like, meh, I'm like, are you kidding me right now? That's more than some people make in a year, right? And so, so uh, of course, this person makes lots of money, right? So meh, 41 grand. Uh, but 50,000, I don't know about you, but that's a good day, right? And then this does not include all of the other benefits that come from having a listing. You guys have heard me say that every listing that goes on the market, one and a half buy sites should be generated. So this, this calculation doesn't take that into fact, right? So if you took five listings, what's one and a half times five? I'm terrible with math. What is that? seven listings, seven, seven buy sites, right? Am I doing the math right? You get where I'm going with that. The other factor too that's not on here is that we know, statistically speaking, when a house goes up for sale, within 90 days, two to three more homes might go up for sale. And if you're hustling, Kim, and doing all the stuff we want to do to represent that expired listing, then I'd like to think that you'd at least have an opportunity to sit down and be interviewed. Right. So this slide does not include all those other things. It doesn't include, you know, the marketing that you're going to do to generate other business. Right. And so I love that. So I, I think potentially if you took five listings, like if we did the math, there's a lot more, it's probably more like a hundred thousand dollars in potential GCI. Okay. Just from being effective, right. Just by having a plan and following it. Okay. Um, and again, expireds might not be for you guys. Right. I mean, Nate will tell you that all his early on business coaches were always writing him about doing expireds and he failed in coaching because every time he'd be like, I'm not going to do it. And so Nate's been in the business almost 40 years. He will tell you, I don't think the man's ever called an expired listing and that's okay. It's okay. I was on a call yesterday with a client coaching and we were talking about four pillars. And I said, he said, I'm going to do social media as a pillar. And I said, can I just challenge you for a second? And he started laughing. He's like, why? I said, because you are not active on social media. So is that really going to be a pillar that you're going to embrace? Or are you feeling pressure right now amongst your peers on your team because they've all said social media is going to be their thing? So I say that because, yes, I love that you're here and I love that you're expanding your minds, but you might get into expired to be like, yeah, peace out, Sarah. I'm not doing that. And that's okay, right? It's okay. But you still need to try and see if it's your thing. You might get on it, Kim, and be like, I love this. I'm eating rejection for breakfast, right? And that's great. <laughs> and that's really the attitude you have to have when you work in expires is that you eat rejection for breakfast, okay? So that's just my little caveat. Kind of sounds counterintuitive that I'm saying that to you guys teaching an expired class, but I just want you to be realistic that it may not be for you, okay? Uh, so we want to have the call to close method. So I'm going to go through some scripts and dialogues with you guys, the opening dialogue, the closing dialogue, some basic comebacks, 
right? Do you guys watch Seinfeld? I love the episode where George spends the entire 30 minutes trying to recreate a moment with his coworker so he can use a one-liner, right? Uh, and so have we all been in that situation, right? Where an hour later, you're like, ah, I wish I would have said that. And so I'm going to give you some comeback phrases and then power phrases uh, for you more difficult people and then some conversational dialogues. And obviously we want to track. Tracking is critical, you guys. Uh, so you want to create like a either an Excel or a Google spreadsheet and track the addresses, right? And then track the number of con um, contacts that you're making with that person and track what you're sending out, right? You may not have a phone number for an expired. So maybe you drop by and take, you know, an unsolicited CMA to them or some information about you. You can go to the post office and get a handful of priority mail envelopes. They're sitting right there on the counter, right? Grab a handful of those. And if you do a drive-by, Kristen, a priority mail envelope is going to get opened. It's priority mail. Right? I'm going to open it. And so you may not have a phone number, so you have to hustle to do that. So you want to track it. And if you're going to, if you're going to do the drive-bys, it needs to make sense, a radius for you, because you're not going to, you're not going to go to Gilbert, right? Kim from, from Peoria. And so you're going to want to pick a radius that's around you. Okay. So tracking that there is a basic tracking sheet in your, in your stuff. I would turn that into a Google doc personally. And then the pre-listing Questionnaire, you will see this throughout a couple of the momentum classes. Uh, this is the form that gets you into the weeds of asking the questions of like, what is it about their home, right? And of course, you're going to have some of those details already from MLS. Um, on page five of the materials, there's a reference to a company called the Red X. Uh, it is a fantastic company that provides contact information for expireds and for sell by owners. And I believe some geo farming as well. Um, it, they do scrub it for the do not call, but obviously you got to be careful with that too and follow those rules. Um, there is a cost associated with Red X, so don't go out and get it unless you're actually going to do it. Um, doing those types of calls is not for everybody. Personally, if I had to get on a dialer, I'd probably go get a job at, at Starbucks because that's not my thing. However, Ashley has been Jones into getting eight to do and like she wants to do it. Right. So good. Great. Go do it. Right. And so just don't spend money on something unless you're actually going to commit to doing it. Um, I did see a demo of Red X uh, at a, an event I was at and it's a really cool product. They'll actually role play with you before you do your calls and you can have them do easy, medium, hard or evil. <laughs> so the evil prepares you for those sellers that are going to tell you that realtors suck, right? And so um, having the pre-listing package or the pre-listing questions. Um, okay, so why why call an expired? So 90% of the expired still have a desire to sell, right? They still want to sell. Uh, and why, why are those so irritated? Because they just gave their agent X amount of months, right? Usually six, sometimes longer. We used to take, back in the day, we'd take a two-year listing on a luxury property, right? Imagine having a two-year listing agreement. We got some people who freak out if it doesn't sell in two hours, <laughs> let alone thinking about having a relationship with someone two years, right? Uh, so they've had an unproductive relationship, right? Um, they were promised reality on the front end that that was an illusion, right? And you guys, part of our our job, and I know I know it's hard because we don't want to be rejected, but we have to be honest with these people. If their house needs paint, we need to tell them that. Right. If they're if they're in the realm of crazy on their pricing, we need to be able to tell them that. And so that's, you know, and, and one of the things I always say is I don't want to set you up for failure, Kim. I don't you know, and it doesn't I don't want to come back to you and ask you for a price reduction because that doesn't feel good to me. I would rather that we do this right in the beginning so I can set you up for the best success. Right. And so and I know that can be challenging. Right. But that's part of our part of our code of conduct says that we'll be honest with people. Right. Uh, and so, uh, so let's see, um, I don't know if I have it on the slide. I don't. So page six. So typical journey of an expired. So week one, we got, we have activity. We're in flow with the person. They're excited. Right. And you think about all of you guys have been, been on a blind date at one time in your life, I'm sure. Or a date where you, a date doesn't matter if it's blind, right. You've been on a date. And as you're preparing for the date, there's a little part of you that's picking out China and wedding invitations, Right. There is, there's a little part of your subconscious that's going, could this be the one, right? My grandma was going to be so happy. <laughs> so so we have that. So imagine a seller who get has a showing, they're imagining that the same thing as the date, that this could be the one, right? And so when we don't provide feedback or we don't get, we don't help them, you know, whatever, right? The feedback, helping them understand the show, whatever, all of that are those emotions that we feel. So it's the same thing. And I think it's a great analogy, but like you're picking out China, well, you're imagining if this buyer is going to be the buyer, right? And so we're excited. We're in flow. A month goes by. Things have slowed down, right? We're still in flow, but the seller's now feeling rejected because the blind date ghosted them, right? Never got a phone call back. 
Okay. And then you're thinking what's wrong with me. Okay. Uh, three months go by limited activity or limited activity. We've slowed way down right now. I don't want to talk to these people anymore. Like, right. We're just, I don't like them now. They're getting kind of ugly with me. I don't know how to tell them their house is overpriced or it stinks. Right. Uh, and then now the sellers become depressed, right? They're just, they're, they're hanging low. Like they don't feel good. Now we're into six months. They've had no showings because the house is now, you know, buyers see that it's been on the market six months. They don't even want to look at it, right? They're rejecting it in their MLS search. Uh, and then we've had no contact. And now the seller is just plain angry, right? They're angry. And so we don't want to do that, you guys. So um, we need them to stay engaged, right? And we have to be honest with them. Um, I have a personal ph uh, philosophy, if you want to call it that, in my business. And no one taught me this. It was just something early on that I adapted is if my client calls me first, I feel like I've let them down. Even Kristen, if I have nothing to update them with, I'm going to say, Kristen, I don't have anything to update. I just want to check in and see how, how you are. When I sold, when we helped, I helped sell my father-in-law's house um, know, six or something years ago. Uh, we were, we had to use the uh, realtor in the mobile home park. One of those situations. And we only had 30 days to sell the place. So every Friday I was calling for updates and I, I'm doing a price reduction. And towards the end, they seemed annoyed with me. <laughs> so, and, and, and it reaffirmed for me, you guys, my the reason why that was so important to my business to make that call. They never once called me, my ex, or my sister-in-law. Never once. We were constantly in communication with them. And it was, we ended up, we did end up selling it, but it was stressful, right? And so for me, that was really just something that like, it's important. It's important to stay in contact with your people because again, blind date, right? They're feeling rejected every time the house is shown and they don't get an offer. And so it's our job to help manage those feelings, right? Uh, and so just, again, make it a part of your plan, don't. But I will tell you in my personal opinion, you need to be the one making the call first with the update, even if there's nothing to update. All right, so- Next slide here. So uh, the main purpose of your call. So your main purpose is to understand your role and the goal to add value, right? We need to be adding value. Our value proposition is under attack right now, right? So our words matter and what we do, we got to step up. And so top listing agents get mad. They're mentally tough. I led the call with that, right? If you're going to work expired, you cannot take it personal. Okay, you got to be committed and then detach from the outcome. Right. Let it go. Play the frozen song. Let it go at the end of your expired session. Right. It's not about you. Right. But as Ogmandino says in the greatest salesman in the world is if I greet this day with love in my heart. Right. So before I get prospecting, I love you, Kristen. Right. If you can say that and I have love in my heart, they come at you like a spider monkey. You're going to handle that differently. Right. And so, you know, because if, if who can say no to my goods, you, maybe you don't like my face, maybe you don't like the sound of my voice, but if you feel the love in my heart, how can you reject me? Right. And I think that's half the battle of prospecting, right. Is coming from a space of, I love you before you pick up. I know it sounds cheesy, right? It sounds cheesy, but before you pick up the phone, I love you. I love you, man. Um, I, I'm going to squirrel for a second. I uh, saw a guy speak um, at the spring AAR conference, which you guys, if you've never been, and I'm embarrassed to say 26 years in this industry, that was the first time I went and I was like 150 bucks for two days. And it was freaking great conference, probably one of the best conferences I've been to. And I got to see this guy speak who was born with this like crazy deformity in his head and he had a bunch of surgeries and, you know, he, he was odd looking, right. But he wanted to be a, a wrestler and he went on to like place like multiple times um, in the state of Utah. And I think it was ESPN cup. They did an interview with him and it was streaming on the internet, whatever. And they had to take it down because people were so horrible saying such horrible things like well, you shouldn't leave the house. Like you're so hideous all these horrible things. And he put it up on the screen. And I have a reason I'm going, I will circle back to why I'm telling you the story, I promise. <laughs> so he puts it up on the screen, the one comment that he got to see. And he messaged the guy back and he said, I love you. And one day we will meet and I will call you my brother. And he left it at that. Think about that. Someone tells you you're so hideous, you shouldn't leave the house. And that's your response. I love you. You're my brother. And, and so fast forward a few years later, the guy reached out to him and they're now friends. And the guy apologized. And he said, you know, you really helped me check myself. 
right? And realize I was I was wrong in doing that. And now they're friends, you know? And so I share that because like someone comes at you as a spider monkey, right? They're just mad because their house didn't sell, right? They're disappointed. They're frustrated. They were promised a reality, right? They have plans, whatever, life. Their house didn't sell and they're angry. And so how many of us in any situation when someone's coming at you like a spider monkey or someone cuts you off in traffic that you could say, I love you, man. Right. So I, I, he was so incredible. I'll, I'll try to find his, his name was Chad something. Um, I'll try to find his information since I send you guys his YouTube. Cause he's amazing. So if you get a chance to see him speak, I definitely would. Okay. So sorry, squirrel for a second, but I felt like that was relevant to what we're talking about right now. How am I doing on time? 923. Okay. So getting on the proper channel mindset. I talk a lot about mindset. Y'all probably get tired of hearing me talk about mindset, but it's so important, right? So you can either make excuses or you can make your dreams come true. I was on a call with somebody this week and we were making excuses about their children, right? Well, I can't do it because I don't got the children. I said, really? You're going to look at that baby and tell me that that baby is wouldn't, right? Right? You, you got the baby, like do what you got to do, right? And so we can't have a plan B. I posted that recently on social media, right? You cannot have a plan B, you guys. If you want to be successful at this business, there can be, there cannot be a net to catch you, right? So, you, so what are we, are we willing to do what we need to do to make our dreams come true? So before the call, have a warm-up process, right? Review your mission statement, your vision, your values, your, your, your goals, right? Your core beliefs. Um, and we have some of those if you don't have them in the next pages. Rehearse your scripts out loud for a few minutes, right? Stand in the mirror. I know that sounds really cheesy and it's painfully uncomfortable, but <laughs> preparation is key, right? Preparation is key. And then visualize the outcome, right? What do I want to have happen, Tanya, in the, while I'm in this next hour of working expires? right? Obviously I want to set some appointments, right? I want to greet this day with love in my heart, right? And have some conversations where, because I know that I'm good at what I do and I can help these people get their home sold, right? So we want to visualize that. And then during the call and, you know, I'm a big music person. So for me, music jacks me up, right? So if you want to play the Rocky theme song before your expired sessions, go for it, right? Whatever that looks like for you, whatever that is going to get you into that mind space of, you know, the right the right attitude, right? Because again, everything is up here. Whether you think you can or you can't, you're right. So during the call, stand up. If you got a rising desk, stand up. I personally love to pace when I negotiate. I've always, I don't know why I've always done it. Uh, there's just something in energy there to stand up, right? Uh, if you get, a, you know, if you don't have a, you can use your, well, we all have cell phones these days. So the materials are a little dated there. Uh, be upbeat, positive, confident, but don't get into the cheerleader or sing songy routine, right? So you want to be confident, positive, but, but don't get into that, you know, cause that's annoying. <laughs> Sound genuine and interested, right? We've all had an encounter with someone where they just were not, happy to be where they are, right? So we smile, right? Smile. I know that sounds cheesy, but you can hear someone smile over the phone, okay? And then stay hydrated. Uh, your brain has 80% uh, water. Hydration's huge, you guys. Um, I have my little bottle. It's got my Remax balloons on. And, so it's, and it's like, it says 8 a.m. It's got like a little thing on it, right? That tells you. So just, you know, make sure you're drinking plenty of water. It's important to do to stay hydrated. And so easy to get dehydrated. And you wouldn't think making calls would zap your energy, but it does, right? It absolutely does. And then after each call, we want to evaluate, right? Rate the call from one to 10. How did it go? And then determine what would have made it a 10 plus. Review your scripts, right? Could I practice my script more? Um, and then rehearse out loud. Uh, and then we want, what did I learn, right? I got to release, release again, play the Frozen song, let it go, rejuvenate, and then focus. Don't ever end any prospecting time, whether that's expired for sell by owners, whatever, don't ever end a session on someone telling you that realtors suck. Because what happens is that creates a negative uh, experience for you. And then the next time that you want to do prospecting, um, you're going to have resistance to it, right? Because you'll be like, mm, that hurt my feelings, or I don't feel good. That didn't feel good. And so uh, as human beings, that's our whole entire point of existence is to feel good. And so if we don't feel good after we end the call, then the next time prospecting comes up, we're going to do everything we can to avoid doing it because it didn't feel good. So even if it's leaving a message, don't end your prospecting on someone telling you realtors suck. Okay. Uh, and then, so if you're going to prospect, 
pick at the office, you know, put a sign up says, leave me alone, right? Or on the glass, put it, you know, leave me alone on prospecting. Uh, I think some people are challenged working from home. Um, you know, so if, if that's you, like, I just did a call yesterday with a guy who works from home and he's his own brick and mortar. So it's not like he has an office to go to. So I suggested, I'm like, why don't you, after you get done with the gym and you're showered and ready, go to a Starbucks, get a cup of coffee and then come home. That will trigger your brain to say, okay, it's go time, right? When got my coffee, now I got to go to work, right? You guys can all get dressed and go to the office. And those of you that I coach inside Remax, that that's the one thing that is a differentiator. They go to the office and they work. It's different. Right. So it's so, so always be on Nate's team. You guys got a beautiful office. No reason not to go in there and work. You know, Kristen, you got a beautiful office. Kim, you can go use one of the conference rooms. Right. There's a difference about getting dressed, being intentional and going to the office. And don't make the excuse that people are going to bug me, because if you put a sign that says, leave me alone, I'm prospecting. People aren't going to bug you. Right. So um, so there is a difference there. So being intentional. Right. Uh, and so we want to be focused. It doesn't make any sense to be unfocused or do half-hearted attempts, right? Because that just leads to frustration, disappointment, and resistance to the task, right? Uh, and so same thing, you know, same thing that I tell you guys about open houses last week. If you think open houses don't work, guess what? They're not going to work. Same thing with expireds, right? Uh, so here's some basics here, um, basic truths about listings. So all homes sell for one of two reasons, right? Price and exposure. If you're using the MLS and you're filling out all of the, the details, right, um, you know, Use the description to write what life would be like living in that home. I will put school districts, subdivision, three bedrooms, two baths, whatever, right? And I know that that seems redundant because it's already in the MLS, but the, 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 the comments are searchable content on the internet, right? Plus, if I'm describing life in that, like this beautiful home in Arrowhead Ranch, right, has great views, stay away from things like family friendly, stay away from words like walking distance, Right. So we got to make sure we're following our fair housing stuff. Right. I cringe sometimes when I read some of the MLS descriptions because I'm like, good Lord, don't say that. <laughs> you got to think about that. So 95% of all buyers are represented by a realtor. Uh, realtors aren't necessarily looking through home ads or taking virtual tours. Um, and then homes sell in all four quarters. Do we have a dip in Arizona in July? Yeah, because it's hot. No one wants to be out. Everybody's on vacation, but homes still sell. I, I had one of my very best years in December. Because why, Kristen, that year I decided everyone says that December is a sucky month and no one makes any money. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prove them wrong. I had one of my best months ever in the month of December, right? Because it's your reality is your perception, right? Reality is your perception. I loved Steve Cushing on the gas meeting uh, yesterday. He said, you know, I just don't listen to the noise. I put my head down and I go to work. Right. I don't listen to the noise. And you guys have heard me say, and I need to coin this phrase is it's one thing to be informed. It's another to be affected. Right. And there's a lot of crap flying at us right now. And, and truth be told, I was affected, absolutely affected by NAR. Absolutely. Right. Had some sleepless nights thinking, what else could I do? I've been in this business since I was 19 years old. I'm 47. Kristen, there's nothing else I can do, <laughs> right? I am a realtor for life, right? And so, so just one thing, like I said, be informed, but don't be affected. Put your head down, go to work. Don't listen to the noise, right? Because there are, we know that the NARS or the Harvard study says that 13% of the population is going to move regardless. We talked yesterday about on gas, about all the new construction. You know, send a blast out to your database and say, hey, there's a spec home right now, five bedroom, three bath. This price, who who do you think's looking? And and include the interest rate, right? What are, what are the builders offering? So okay, so pricing homes is neighborhood specific. My approach is intentional, and proactive. We must start with the appropriate plans and strategies. We have to have a GPS, right? We have to know what are the days on market, what are the trends that exist in that neighborhood, right? What are the benchmarks, the pricing benchmarks? Um, cost is only the issue in the absence of value. So you guys, if you're going to sit across the table from a seller and you're going to ask for X apples, you better make sure that there's X, X apples worth of value, right? Some of you asked me in one of the classes recently for um, Frank Russo had written a thing many years ago. It's like 110 things that the Russo team does when they list a home. If any of you want it, send me an email. I'm happy to send it to you uh, because we have to go, we got to go deep, right? You got to say, we're making a key for the file. We got to make sure our broker's happy, right? Oh, and we're putting it in the MLS. There's been agents that have lost listings to that because they didn't tell the seller that they were put in the MLS, Right. Uh, and then, and again, words matter right now. We have to start scripting things different when we're talking about commission. Okay. Uh, your approach is intentional and proactive, intentional, right? Intend, I intend to get your home sold. 
So we have to start with the, the GPS uh, and then I'm not seeking your listing, just a conversation. That is one key, the key thing in this class is you guys, are the, the, the point is not to get the listing. I just wanna have a conversation with you. And when you take that approach, it's kind of like uh, the takeaway, right? Anybody had the takeaway done, right? Well, that's okay. I don't want you, right? And take this away. Same, so it's kind of that, like, uh, I just, I, Kristen, I, I don't know if this is going to be a win-win. I don't know if we're a good fit. I just want to sit down and have a conversation with you, right? As opposed to let me list your house, right? And we do the same thing with the first sale by owners too. So there are two very different approaches to those two listing homes, okay? Uh, and that's being, you know, the, the intentional, right? And having a plan. So these are the things that you want to have in your mindset, right? Before you start even thinking about working uh, expireds. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Uh, so making the call. So what if they're not home? Um, leave a vague message, right? Leave a vague message. Second call, uh, you can leave a little bit more specific message. If no call back, now we can show up with a letter or again, priority mail, drop something off. Okay. Um, you could call text, call text email. If you have an email, you could do that. I also like the idea of sending a video text. Your competition isn't doing that. Um, and if you send the video text, Hey, it's Kim with Remax professionals. Right. And it's going to, it's going to break down that barrier. I was listening to something. Um, oh, it was my mastermind yesterday. And they were talking about video and they were talking about how video, and I've heard this before, how video fast tracks the relationship. People get to know you, right. Um, because they're interacting with you on video. And so it breaks down that barrier. Right. Uh, and so the, the script here on page 10 is, hi, this is Sarah with Remax Professionals. I'm calling regards to your home for sale. Please return my call to your earliest convenience. Leave your phone number. Thanks. And I hope you have a great day. So that's your vague message. The next one, and this is the script that I absolutely love you guys. So if there's anything you take out of this class, it's this. So I specialize in homes that should have sold, but didn't. Let that soak in for a second. I specialize in homes that should have sold that didn't. If I'm an expired seller, well, why didn't my home sell? What do you mean, Tanya? You specialize, you got some magic pill, right? So then return my phone number. Let's discuss the options that you have for getting your home sold. The next one is that I would like to talk to you about a more effective way to sell your home. And then please return my call. I like the first script better. It's just got so, it packs a punch. Right. I specialize in homes that should have sold, but didn't. And if you could say that with enough confidence, right, maybe even a little bit cocky, <laughs> right? It's okay to be cocky sometimes, right? Especially in a case of dealing with an expired seller, right? Uh, it's like, hey, I can get the job done, right? Uh, and so that's the second messaging. Let's see, did I get that up there? I did. Okay. All right. So we got on, this is on page 11. So building the consistent habit. So much of what we do, you guys, is just consistency. And I know it gets boring, right? It gets boring. I, I, I sometimes am bored to tears to show up and teach you guys the same momentum classes every Tuesday. That's why I got to have squirrel moments and tell you stories. <laughs> so, so I get it, right? It's boring. Prospecting is not fun. Nobody likes doing it. I had a call with somebody who's 20 years in the industry this week. What is prospecting? How do you do it? What is it? How do you do it? Blew my mind that I'm having this conversation with this person, right? And, and I would guess that there's a few of you not going to raise your hand, but there's a few of you that have the same thought. And so let me just quickly say, prospecting is defined as looking for new business. What it is not, it is not lead follow-up and it is not calling your best friend on your way home from, from the office. That is what prospecting is not, right? Lead follow-up is already a lead that you have, right? Following up on an escrow is not prospecting, right? So it is defined as looking for new business. Now I could go down a rabbit hole of how Every day, you guys, that you walk out of your house and you have your name badge on or something that indicates to the world that you're in real estate, you are prospecting. Going out to lunch and leaving your business card with your tip is prospecting. Chatting the person up in the grocery line. I heard this script the other day. I've yet to try it, but I'm gonna. Be in line at the grocery store, look in the cart and go, oh my gosh, I've been wanting to try that. Do you like that brand? Now you're wearing your Remax shirt, right? I got my Remax shirt on today. Oh, you're in real estate. Which by the way, I would get things with the balloon versus Remax, right? I think the balloon's more noticeable. Um, I got all, there's all females on here. Uh, name badge, it's blingnamebadge.net. It was $20. I don't know if inflation, if the prices have gone up. I don't know if you guys have seen my, my name badge, but the Remax balloon is all in rhinestones. 
it is a showstopper when I wear that, Ashley, like people, it, it gets attention, right? And it's got a real nice heavy duty magnet on it. So, and they have different options. I chose to do the balloon and, and, and rhinestones because it stands out. Um, so, and again, they used to be 20 bucks. I don't know if they still are, uh, but even if they're 25, it's worth it, worth the investment, right? Um, all things real estate, great websites. You can buy all kinds of things branded to you. Nate had a situation recently where he was wearing a shirt that said, ask me about real estate. And somebody did. <laughs> and he was kind of caught off guard because I think he forgot he was wearing the shirt, right? And so um, the brand sells. Um, I I will tell you 98% of the time when I wear something that's logoed, I have a conversation about real estate. Okay. So again, prospecting is defined as looking for new business. And every day you were prospecting, right? Um, I'll just share this real quick. Coffee shop prospecting. And I'm not get back to the materials. Um, go to Starbucks. And even if you don't have the money to do it, you can set up like the back of my computer has a thing that says, ask me about real estate and a bunch of Remax balloons. If I go to a Starbucks or any coffee shop, it is freaking obvious. Plus my water bottle's got all kinds of Remax balloons on it. It is obvious that I'm in real estate, right? Could I chat people up? Now the concept of, pro of coffee shop prospecting is that you would pre-buy 50 bucks worth of coffee. And you could go a step further and have a little card made that says, you know, this cup of Joe has been provided to you by you know, Tanya Smith with Nate Martinez team, right? And your picture and your contact information. You give that to barista. Barista says, hey, your coffee's on Tanya. They're going to come over and thank you, right? They're just going to have, most people have manners, right? They're going to come over and thank you. And what's the thing they're going to say? How's the market? I hear it's crazy. I hear interest rates are horrible, right? Uh, and so now you're going to get to engage them and you're going to have that conversation, okay? I would not do that on a Saturday when moms take all their children in because your $50 will be gone in like two people. Uh, and so do it on like a Wednesday morning when people are commuting, right? And they'll stop by and have a conversation with you, okay? That is a great way. If you have no leads uh, and you're new, that is a great way to meet new people, okay? Um, okay, so opening phone dialogue. So again, I'm not going to read all these to you guys because I want to get to the rest of the materials, but uh, we want to have we want to be confident and consistent, right? And so again, I noticed, so I noticed that your home expired today and was calling to see if you still have a desire to sell. Now, depending, you know, you may want to wait a day or two. Again, it's totally up to you. Like how, how mentally tough are you, right? Uh, obviously they're going to get a lot of calls the first day the house expires. Okay. Uh, so if they say no, we say, thanks. Have a great day. If they say yes, great. May I set an appointment to come see, uh, come by and share with you a proactive plan for getting your home sold. And then want to go for the close. Okay. Um, we can't make calls before 8 a.m. or after 9 p.m. I would not be calling anyone at 9 p.m. or even after probably 7 p.m. <laughs> That's just rude. So if you're calling me after 7, you better be in the hospital <laughs> so or a relative. Uh, so being more effective. So the opening dialogue. So I noticed your home expired today and I was calling to see if you're still serious about selling your home. And then you can see on the flow chart closing for the appointment. So I'm a real estate consultant who specializes in homes that should have sold, but didn't. Is it okay if I simply come by, introduce myself and gain an understanding of exactly what you need in a successful transaction? Together, we can decide if I'm a professional who can handle the job of selling your home. Would that be possible? You guys, that's brilliant. That is brilliant. If you could master that, Kim, and say that with confidence, right? And maybe a touch of arrogance, right? Who's going to say no to you? Who's going to say no, Right. I'm gaining, I'm not coming to list your house. I need to understand what you need in a successful transaction because I guarantee you the previous agent didn't ask that because unless you're taking these momentum classes with me, you've never been exposed to that type of concept, right? So we have to understand where they are, right? And then we'll decide if you, if we agree that I'm the person who can handle getting the job done. There's that takeaway again, right? I'm not coming in and hammering you for the listing. They've already had 40 people do that to them today. Right. And so we're going to take a different approach. Okay. Uh, and then let's see. So some of you might be a little bit uncomfortable with, with the power stacking, right? And so there's some, some power stacking in here. And again, I'm not going to go through all of them, uh, but why do you think your home didn't sell? And then we got to let them answer. Right. And a lot of times, you know, they're going to say, well, it's the realtor's fault. And so do we know how many showings did you have? What was the feedback? Did any of those buyers buy another home? Um, or any other homes on the market that, that were like yours? How did you get to your price, right? Do you know of the benchmarks and trends that exist? And so you can see all these questions. They're going to say no, because again, agents, most agents are not having these conversations. That's why the house expired, right? So, and, and there are times when it expires because the seller is just unrealistic. And I get that, right? There are definitely those people. Um, and then, so do you think this kind of information would be valuable to you? So yeah, there are agents that let do that, but 
if you're going to take listings, again, code of ethics says that we're going to be honest with people. The This type of data is what the seller needs. And if the seller has that data, then hopefully they don't stay in the realm of unrealistic, right? Does that make sense? And, and again, you're going to have that percentage of people who do, and that's, you do, right? But I think for the whole, people who are serious about selling their home, they need this information so they can make informed decisions, right? They can be educated about the path that you're doing, the, the way you're trying to do this is not going to work, right? And that's our job to help them understand that. Okay, we're not going to role play, um, but I am going to, I think these are all scripts at this point. Okay, so I'm going to stop share because we don't need to just stare at that. Uh, so page 13, we talked about that. So page 14, seller's common responses. So, and I'm not going to read all these to you guys because you guys can read yourselves after you get the materials, but here's the common responses. I wish you realtors would stop calling me. We're going to relist with our current agent. We're going to take it off the market. Are you saying you can sell my home in the next 30 to 45 days? Uh, and then what do you mean? My listing has expired. That's when you know that they've had no communication with their agent, right? Is that they don't even know that their house expired, okay? And I think that's probably, I think that should be like the number one on the list because I think that happens more often than, than people knowing that their home expired. Uh, my realtor told me it was the wrong time of year. You guys, we live in Arizona. We don't shovel sunshine. Yeah, July is hot, but there's still houses that sell, right? It's still a good time to sell. Um, and, you know, it, it just is. And people have that mindset. It's it's not, it's not true. Um, are there areas of, of the world? But even some of my clients that shovel snow, they still can have amazing springs, right? Amaz amazing first quarters. Uh, so do you have a buyer for my home now? And then how much do you charge? You guys don't ever, ever, ever talk commission on the phone. You'll be done. That You won't even get the appointments. So my script, Kristen, is that that's a great question. And before I can answer that, I need to come out and, and, and evaluate your personal situation because I like to tailor make my commission packages based on your personal needs. Is that fair? And everybody wants something tailored to them, right? Is it the same for everyone? Yes. But Lynette, am I going to tell them that? No. So don't ever talk commission on the phone. Okay. Uh, and there's a script for that. So it says in here that... Um, says that it's very important to you. How about I come out and share my plan to sell your home? And at the end of a meeting, I'll let you determine what, what I'm worth. Is that fair? Um, so you got to have, definitely have something to be prepared for that because, oops, sorry, what I'm doing. Uh, so, because it is a question people ask, right? Um, page 15, so advanced dialogue. So when all seems lost, go to one of the following power phrases. And again, you guys, power phrases are for stubborn people and not all of you are going to be comfortable using them. Right. My strong D's in the room will have no problem. Uh, my high S's will be like, yeah, Sarah, that's offensive. <laughs> so you should never say no until you know what you're saying no to. There are many opportunities available you never knew existed. Worst case scenario, you'll know exactly why your home didn't sell and receive a specific plan on how to get it sold. And then who knows? You may just find out we speak the same language. Wouldn't it be worth an hour of your time to see if I might be a better approach to getting your home sold? At this point, what do you have to lose? You gave your previous agent six months. How about you give me an hour? I wouldn't be calling if I didn't think I could help you. So what do you say? Now, those can all be said in a way that's not aggressive, right? Um, they can all be said. And I wish I had a cute little Southern accent because people with Southern accents can tell you to pound sand and you're like, oh, thank you, <laughs> right? <laughs> they totally can. And so we can say things in a loving way. And again, Ogmandino, if you haven't read that book, go get it, right? It's a fantastic read. And so I will greet this day with love in my heart. So we can say these things that, you know, at this point, what do you have to lose, Lynette? I, I could say that in a loving, charming way. Right. And so those are your power phrases that you can stack. Right. And so that's what page 16 is, is basically taking all that I just read and saying it all in one breath. Right. And not giving them a chance to Lynette's laughing face. I love that. Not giving them a chance to respond. Right. And so um, pay, the next script is you're the 22nd person that's called me today. So that's going to happen. Right. Because people do. There are people that work expired. Um, I wish you people would stop calling me. So there's a script for that. And then uh, the ABCs, right? Always be closing. So we are we are going to relist with our current agent. Uh, we're going to take it off the market. And then are you saying you can sell my home for that in the next 30, 30 to 45 days? So that's page 17. Page 18, what's the difference between a consultant and an agent? And how many of you feel like you're a consultant? Kind of are, right? Because what are we doing? We're consulting them on how to get their home sold. 
right? And as a consultant, especially right now with how bad of a rap we're getting as realtors, <laughs> maybe we should all start calling ourselves real estate consultants, right? And so when we consult someone, that's different than me just coming in and Lauren telling you what your home is worth or telling you why it didn't sell or telling you what you need to do. If I consult you, now we're partners, right? We're figuring out this is could be a win-win, right? Um, so I love that. So uh, what do you mean my listing expired? There's a script for that. My realtor told me that it was the wrong time of year. There's a script for that. 19, page 19. So what do you mean you specialize in homes that should have sold that didn't? And again, if there's anything you take from that class, let's burn that script into your into your mind, okay? Uh, do you have a buyer for my home? I just want to be left alone. You're all the same. <laughs> so there's a great script for that. Uh, and then lastly, we have the ABCs again. So why didn't, why didn't you show my home when it was sold? That's a great one that you got to be prepared for. So if you're calling people and you're active in that area and you haven't shown that house. So if you guys are farming, preview. Um, I try to preview any of the vacant stuff in my neighborhood uh, because I want to. I just want to get out there, right? Plus, if that property fails to sell and that seller sees that I was in their house, right? A little sneaky trick there, you know, uh, and I'm farming in here. Plus, then I go preview their home, right? So it's a, an added thing. So if you're farming, go preview. Right. So that way, you know, uh, you know, what's what the, what are the trends and things that exist in the area? Uh, and then you got to be prepared if you didn't show the house. Well, why? Right. So there's a script. Um, and then. An alternative opening dialogue. So Mrs. Mr. Smith, this is Sarah with Remax Professionals. Listen, I don't want to bug you because you've probably been bombarded with calls today. However, I specialize in homes that should have sold but didn't. And I'm simply wondering if it would be a good time, when would be a good time for me to come out and share with you a proactive plan for getting your home sold? Um, and so that's a good script if you want to call that first few days that it's expired. Uh, the last page you have here. Actually, the last two pages, sorry. Uh, last two pages is a tracker. So Peter Drucker, great quote is what gets measured gets done. Uh, tracking or yeah, tracking has been a theme this week in coaching um, because if we want to level up, you guys, you got to track, right? Um, we got to know how many calls you're making, how many open houses are you doing? You know, it's like, you, you know, if you've ever been on a diet, right? My very first diet that I went on was Jenny Craig and you had a track course back then. We had paper journals, right? We didn't have all the digital stuff you have today. So you had to track your water, you track how many calories, right? And they actually had you journal about your mindset too. And you would meet every week with a with a coach. Of course, they'd check your weight, right? And then they would check your mind, right? To make sure because when people lose weight, oftentimes they still see the fat person in the mirror or the heavy person, should use the word fat. You see that person, right? So they have a disconnect with what's really happening. And so when we track things, right, it helps us to not have that disconnect, right? And it helps us to see, like I was doing my numbers the other day. I was like, huh. I didn't realize I've made that much money this year. I wasn't tracking it, right? And I'm always amazed at how many of you guys I sit down with and I say, what's your year to date? And you don't know. Hey, you don't know. You don't know how many houses you've sold. You don't know what your commission is. We need to be tracking that. We need to be tracking it every month because Lynette, if you get off course, we need to course correct, right? And so tracking is so critical, you guys. We have to track everything. So again, if you've ever been on a diet, you, now we track water, we track steps. We've got these cool little watches that help us do that, right? Um, and so we have to, if you want to level up, the only way to do that is to track what you're doing because maybe you don't know what you're doing. And it's so easy to get stuck in the minutia or go down the rabbit hole, right? Or get on Facebook and next thing you know, an hour has gone by, Right. So we have, and it's going to continue to be a theme for me of tracking. Cause I think it's just right now, it's so, so important that we track everything we do. And then what's the return on investment? If you're spending money on something, it needs to be a three to four times the return. So if it's a thousand dollars, you can make at least three to four. And if it's not there, then we need to stop or change. Right. Cause the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. Okay. So ROI is important. So you, Page 21, I would turn this into a, a into a Google Doc, right? So it's just basic, right? The day of the week, how many dials did you make? How many talks did you have? How many appointments did you set? How many meetings? And then how many listings did you actually take, okay? Uh, and I don't think I need to define a, di a dial, right? That's your attempt. Um, and then setting the appointment. The last thing on here is the pre-listing questions. And you guys will see these in a couple momentum classes. Again, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Take this page and print it out. <laughs> Because this is just for your internal use, right? Who cares if this says momentum on it? Print it out and make this a part of your, your, you know, where, where 
where your prospecting is, have this form and fill it out, right? This is all the information you want to gather about this person. Plus you obviously have the MLS data as well. Uh, so just some basic stuff. Again, you could turn that into a Google doc. However, I probably wouldn't. Um, I personally like the paper uh, intake sheets as I call them uh, so that I can have them right by my prospecting area. So that being said, that's what I have for you today. Thanks for being here. Any questions, comments, who's going to go crush it with uh, expireds? Kristen, got one hand. Oh, thank you. Yeah, Tanya, that was who it was. It wasn't, why did I see Chad? No, it's Ben. Yeah. Yeah, it was so good. So um, yeah, he was amazing. Go look him up on YouTube. Uh, Ashley, go ahead. You had to come off mute though. That's right. You would know who he's from, Tanya, because you're from uh, Utah. Ashley, did you raise your hand? You're muted if you did. I didn't mean to, Sarah. I don't know what I'm doing over here. <laughs> I know. Tanya, go ahead. Yeah, he's a, uh, well, one, because he was a wrestler and I had a wrestler. So, and he's from Utah. So I, I do follow him and he does have some really good, good insight and just, he, he's very inspirational. Yeah, really cool guy. Sure. Yeah. I was yeah. in tears at the end of his, at the end of his talk. So yeah, uh, yeah just, and just that like, man, I, it, to be, makes me want to be a better human. Right. Cause I think I'm pretty Zen. Right. But I have my moments. And so to, to, to be in that, that level, like, poof. so yeah, he's amazing, yeah. but cool. All right. I got to jump off. Cause I got Shannon right behind me and I don't want to uh, have people start jumping in zoom for her. So you guys, it's been a pleasure today. Thank you so much. And thank you for coming to classes all year round or all, all this year. And uh, I will be checking in on some of you that uh, Kristen and Fred and Kim, I think you're probably pretty close to, uh, being done. And so uh, if I don't see you guys at the VIG and I don't see you before, have a wonderful holiday. And if you need anything, reach out. My offer to do a one-on-one -on -one with y'all still stands. Uh, so if you want to take advantage of that and schedule a time with me, I'm, I'm happy to do that. So uh, Lynette, you came off on video. You got something you want to add before we wrap? Nope. You good? Okay. Awesome. All right, you guys, it's my pleasure. I'll see you. Hopefully see you all on Thursday at the VIG. So thank you. Bye guys. Have a great day. Bye.